in 2009, I lost my job. I was fired. And, and that's when the crash was happening. And it thoroughly prepared me to have my best year in the whole world in 2020. How would I know a decade later when the world would go crazy again, I would have every tool that I would need to not only win, but help. I built so many millionaires this year because I was prepared by the hate and resentment and turning it into that rocket fuel, joy, forward motion, progress, advancement, all pain is an opportunity for growth. And that's what turned it all around for me and so many people. And if that wouldn't have happened to me and I wouldn't have learned those tools over the last decade, I might've barely made it myself. Welcome back to another episode of the Who You Know Show podcast, where what you know is important, but who you know can make all the difference in your business, career, relationships, and life. My name is Trevor Houston, and on this show, you'll learn the strategy, grit, and mindset it takes to overcome obstacles so you can level up in your career, recover your cash flow, and live the life of purpose that God intended for you. Don't forget to look at the mic drop moments time stamped in the show notes below. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure to pay it forward, subscribe and leave an honest review so we can improve. Thanks for listening. My name is Trevor Houston, and please enjoy this episode of the Who You Know Show. Known as the millionaire maker, guiding the masses to build million dollar businesses offline. She's a best selling author and one of the most sought after female speakers on marketing, sales, online business strategy, communication, and personal development in the world. I'd like to talk about your journey a little bit and how you got here on this show. I want to give a special shout out to Glenn Lundy. Tell us about how you met Glenn and like where that relationship came from because Glenn cannot speak highly enough about you. He just rants and raves about Danelle, Danelle. So how'd you meet Glenn? Glenn Lundy is this rare being. I was speaking at 10X actually, and we did an after party at Grant's house. And this man just walks up to me and stands very close to me. And I have a personal space issue. <laughs> he just looked me right in the eye and said, it was me. You are here to speak to me today. And when you told me to raise my hand, I raised my hand and I just had to come tell you, I'm going to be one of the ones. And uh, he was so passionate. I said, then I guess I'm here to help. Here's my phone number. That's where it all started. That is awesome. Yeah. Bold. Yeah. He just was like, hey, I got to talk to you. That's what's up. So job seekers, take note on that. Sometimes there are people in the room that you know can make an impact you know that they can open doors for you and you got to be bold. You got to put yourself out there. You got to go just say hello because, you know, what do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose and everything to gain. So Glenn did that, reached out to Danelle, was like, hey. And then he says something to me all the time. You spoke something into him. You told him that he was the asset, right? Yeah. So we were at a big event and I came in to speak for them and there was another big speaker there who would trying to do some deals with him and everything. And he was really excited. And I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Glenn, don't be excited about that. Like, don't be excited about somebody else in the room. Be like, God made you the asset. He needs you, not the other way around. And I think that, I think people do life from business with those who increase their odds of winning. And when you're working hard and you're in a direction, God will use that and bring bigger names and people and opportunity to you. I'm like, Glenn was running. And I was like, don't get confused about who's the most important person in the room right now. You put all this together. We're all here for you. I love that. Yeah. He told me that story and I was like, wow, okay, that's super powerful. You have a gift. Your gift is being able to look into others and see their gift. And I really love that. I think that's something that not a lot of people have but uh, you've definitely got it. You're the type of person I can already tell you, you can look at somebody and you're like, ooh, here's what you need to do. I see your gift, you point it out. That's why you're a good coach. Talk to me about that. I know your backstory says, your bio says that you're a survivor. And I'm a firm believer that our scars are really meant to heal and help other people. Do you care to share any of that, maybe backstory? Yeah, I think I remember back when everything started to go haywire. And I was writing in a journal and I was like, God, if you can use me, 
And at that time in my life, I really had no life experience. And as I looked back to the journal a decade later, I go, oh my gosh, the divorce, cancer, loss of everything, starting from scratch, having nothing, being broke. And really having nowhere to go, but to me, like, okay, it's all we got. We took away all my people, all my things, all my possessions. That's how he made me usable. I can now help any family who's thinking about divorce or any single mom or single dad. I could help anyone who's overcoming a health thing. And I can see the stories in people's eyes that they don't want to tell. And most people forget that their money their success, their fulfillment, their significant difference they can be made only comes when they tap into those dark spots that God wants to make light. And when you let them be in the light, he gets to use them and it'll blow your mind, you know, where he takes them. Okay, so y'all, what did I tell you about the mic drop moments? Bam, there's another one. And by the way, Mark dropped his mic. His earpiece wasn't working, so we're getting that fixed. But Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Sometimes guys, the hardships that we go through, those are the things that God will use those trials and tribulations in your life to help other people. So I love that is super impactful. So, and well, and you know, I, I like the biblical, right? Analogy of the refiner's fire, the refiner's fire that you're, it's burning off away all the impurities, all of the unnecessary and uh, leaving you pure, and you've just exploded from there. So that's awesome. I couldn't help anyone unless I had some lessons to learn, right? I wouldn't have been able to see hurt in other people's eyes or potential in people's eyes because I didn't even believe in a I had any, right? I had to figure out how to be refined and take the fire, not be burned from and be like, oh, this is how I become the one, right? This is the process through. That's <laughs> the pain comes first, then the progress. I wish you could do it the other way around, but it doesn't happen that way. Yeah, that. What were you doing before your business? You help a lot of people now. You're what we call a world changer, okay? You are out there making moves and really impacting the world. So what were you doing before that, though? I was a teacher and a youth pastor. And when know. you're a, a youth pastor... <laughs> and you get divorced, there's not really a place for you. But it was it was an exact transition that was necessary. That was the greatest gift I could have been given is, hey, I'm going to take away every plan you've had for your life and show you what the real one is. Mm, right. You know? Yeah. 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 What about some struggles along the way, right? Because now you've got a lot of success. You're doing a lot of really great things. Was it always that way? Or was it was there a lot of like... Um, roadblocks in the way and, and maybe what are some of those obstacles that you've had to overcome to get to where you're at today? No, it was super easy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's, I tell people I'm a professional hurdler, right? It's, um, you know, you, you, I think some of the biggest things were learning that people, what's the greatest part about, about business and job searching and finding your place in the world is people. The hardest part and the best part are the people. And for me, I'm a very heart-centered leader. And so I tend to forgive everyone. I'm grace above and beyond. I'm heart, I'm love. And people are the equivalent of their experiences. So one of the hardest parts for me was being hurt by those I loved in it. You mm -hmm. know, some of them didn't like when I was successful. Some of them liked me only when I was successful. Some of them wanted to know me just for what I could gain for them. And some of them wanted a piece of what I had. And it's learning how to build healthy boundaries and learning how to understand that those are their experiences from something that's broken them. And maybe, just maybe, my, my emotional intelligence and strength that I have built could be the key to teaching them that hurting people wasn't the way and that they could be shown ultimate grace and forgiveness and that. So I was told by a lot of people, listen, you're so sweet. You're going to get eaten alive in business. You're mm -hmm. so kind. Like, just watch yourself. And I'm like, no, that was my secret weapon, you know, that I could be graceful always and go, that's where they're at right now. I'll move forward. I'll set new boundaries, but I love them with all my heart, no matter what they did to me. But it was, um, it was a, a hurdle to go. I'm not even going to listen to my greatest mentor that I need to change because that is how God built me. And I will always be that way. And I will always be full of grace. I don't care what it costs me. That's just... Uh, That's just in the blood. 
I love that unapologetic, right? About who you are. And especially if it is aligned with your morals. And I think it's a great message for our audience because there is a lot of hurt out there, right? Some people, it may be like, I've been betrayed by my yeah. company, by the people that I cared about. I cared, I was loyal to my company. And, and there's a lot of bitterness and there, there can be, right? A lot of bitterness yeah. in the hurt. And it just shows the strength of where you're coming from to be able to turn that into one of our other guests says, turn it into rocket fuel, right? And so. Yeah, Sea Rock. You know Sea Rock? Yeah, you know Sea Rock? I bet you know Sea Rock. Yeah, see, I, do, see, I just do Sea Rock. Take the turn it into rocket fuel. <laughs> yep. I think that's my exact story. I think I was so angry. My family left because they didn't believe in my divorce. So they didn't ever call again. Mm. My, my business success, I had lots of things like that. And I was such an angry human. I had to find a tool that helped me transition from that kind of pain, that bitterness, that hurt, that resentment. That's how I was raised. I watched my family live that way. And I was like, something's not right to this. So it was developing those tools to drop those and understand. In 2009, I lost my job. I was fired. And, and that's when the crash was happening. And it thoroughly prepared me to have my best year in the whole world in 2020. How would I know a decade later when the world would go crazy again, I would have every tool that I would need to not only win, but help. I built so many millionaires this year because I was prepared by the hate and resentment and turning it into that rocket fuel, joy, forward motion, progress, advancement. All pain is an opportunity for growth. And that's what turned it all around for me and so many people. If that wouldn't have happened to me and I wouldn't have learned those tools over the last decade, I might have barely made it myself rather than I'm dunking it myself and helping so many people do the same thing. Wow. Uh, Hit it. Mic drop. All pain is opportunity for growth. Love that. that. Yep. Love, Love that. It. How do you, okay, so let me ask you this. How do you shift your mindset? Because it's all up here. How do you shift your mindset from being a victim of, hey, this happened to me? We hear a lot of things, right? I was thinking about this earlier today. Just today, I was thinking about this. We get a lot of, people throwing out the uh the ageism card right and and it is a real deal actually i mean it, yeah, it yeah. it's a real thing but i feel like that's almost it's a card that they're using to try to take accountability off sometimes yeah it's and to be. say this happened to me because i'm not getting any opportunities because and the truth is i was thinking about this today everybody's in the black hole whether you're 50 you're 40 you're 35 like you, the job search process is equal for everyone and nobody's getting any callbacks. <laughs> like everybody's getting ghosted by Struggle employers. Is real. Yeah. Like it's, de it's not as much about the age. Really, it's not. And so I was thinking about that today. I was like, you know what? Everybody says the same thing. But um, anyway, so I, I, I digress. How do we get all over the victim mentality and how do we get over the, uh, that obstacle that's in between your mind? What are some thoughts there? Yeah, I think there's one way and it's retraining your brain, right? Our brains are all trained by our experiences. And for me, my experiences left me angry, resentful, frustrated, blaming other people, just like you said, oh, it must be his fault, her fault, this happened. And the truth of that, my grandpa always used to tell me, he's like, when the world knocks you around a little bit, you had something to do with it. And he mm -hmm. was right. And gratitude is the way to retrain your brain where it will do things that you can't explain. They are superpowers from heaven, in my opinion. And so I started training myself when I found out I had cancer. Like I'd just gotten through the divorce. I got smoked in the divorce. It was just a hard situation. I kept coming back. I kept having that situation. Found out I had cancer and was just like, you know, where most people would be like, poor me. Things happen in grief. They're terrible. I hear it all the time. I started writing gratitude and it was 10 things I was grateful for that day. And on a daily process, about 40 days into it, you'll see a transition. 90 days into it, you'll start to see opportunity. A year later, every challenge that happens, like when I get called to go into companies, they've got a problem. So they're all frustrated when I get there, right? And I walk in and I'm like, man, this is the best day of my life. Let's get this rolling. Because you start seeing the pain as the gift. Like, thank God we have something to fix today. That life is never going to be boring. That is going to shift. Who knows? Every job that I've lost, 
every new opening that I've got, every horrible boss, everything taught me how to be prepared to skyrocket in the next journey. So what if you learned to look at that as this is your greatest gift? 2020 could be your greatest gift because you look in an industry you never would have thought of before. You look to work for someone that maybe you don't admire, maybe you're supposed to help and move in. There's all these different moments that if we can just train our brain to say, I'm the lucky one who woke up today, let's go get this. Amen. Life takes on different form. Yeah, mic drop. <laughs> yeah, so it, look, some people are, right? Some people are hardwired that way, like they're natural positivist, right? Yeah. Where they, there's a silver lining, like they're glass half full people, but but you can train yourself, right? So Is that's that a what word? you're saying. Is that a word? I don't know. I just made that up. We uh, saw them unicorns. They're yeah. sunshine and rainbows, right? right? Some are, I, right? But for if you're not, and this is to you, to the audience, if you're not, that it doesn't have to be that way. You can change, and it's a, it's a training. So, so um, when I was 20, I got in a motorcycle accident and I had internal bleeding in the head. I wasn't wearing a helmet, all that kind of stuff, and got jacked up pretty good. And I remember, like, after that motorcycle accident, coming out, the happiest I'd ever been and just mm -hmm. being on cloud nine and just appreciating every breath, like just, wow, thank you, God. Oh my gosh, I should not be here. And just literally just being so thankful and so grateful. And I remember asking God, don't take this away from me. Like I need to, this feeling that I have right now, I need to hold on to that forever. And I wish I could say that it was here forever. It did slowly start to fade. But it goes back to what Danielle was saying was about gratitude, like practicing the gratitude, Attitude writing it down. Gratitude. Because otherwise, like, it's on my own fault that it faded. It's my fault that it faded, right? Because I wasn't practicing mm -hmm. gratitude as much as I was right when I got off that motorcycle accident. Like, I was super grateful. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're just high on life. I was high <laughs> on life, for real. <laughs> but and that's where I tell people, I'm like, listen. The greatest thing in the world is when pain returns because it keeps you fresh on needing gratitude and needing to focus your brain in the right way. I always tell people, I'm like, just hurry up. Like, just hurry up to the pain because I'll tell you, it's teaching you the next thing you're going to need. And I think that's, you know, why I love it. I think that's why my story inspires people because I just don't quit with progress. That's where I like find out what I'm made of every single, every single day love it. I think Will Smith talks about it all the time. Learn through your failures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely love that. All right. So let's get back to it. What is your why? Okay. You know, everybody practices their why. They connect to it. What is your why? I think it's grown over time, right? In the beginning, I have three little kids. I have twins that are 12 and a 14 year old now. They were two, two and three when life got crazy. But, um, you know, in the beginning, it was for them. It, if I wouldn't have had them, it probably would have been touch and go there for a little mm -hmm. while. There were there were some really hard times and they had to eat. And it made me do things with zero fear because I had to figure it out. But I think as it changed, I was even sitting here. I'm in Cabo and all my friends are out playing in the ocean. And I got a couple of messages yesterday that were like, are you going to go live on Friday? It's Christmas, but it's the only thing I'm looking forward to this season. I had all these heartfelt messages and I just started randomly calling people online who were in my inbox and just saying, hey, I appreciate you. Merry Christmas. You should feel joy today. It's a choice. Turn it around. And I started giving back. And I think I am so addicted to my impact that that is the biggest why I could ever live. It's teaching my kids to live with making a difference. And I think we're an addictive society and I've struggled with all different kinds of things. But the moment I got addicted to my impact, everything changed for me. Oh, yes. I like that. Making an impact. 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 You know, and I, okay, so I like what you said about just picking up the phone and, and reaching out because we teach a strategy in one of our summits that uh, incorporates a video. And uh, one of the things that I tell my audience all the time is like, hey, when you're starting to practice with this video stuff, because it's not going to come easy for most people. Take that as an opportunity to reach out to your loved ones, reach out to the people that, you know, you haven't talked to in a while, the people that maybe you should reach out and say, hey, I love you and I appreciate you and here's why, and send them a video and do that. 
and watch what happens. And so I'm curious, when you picked up that phone and you reached out and you called a couple of people, like, what's their reaction like? Yeah, they're like, well, most of them were a little shocked. They're like, hi, is it hello? But I said, hey, I just wanted to let you know, you know, I got your message and um, it just struck me a minute. I took a minute from vacation because I'd rather make sure you're doing okay for Christmas. Love. And I just, I always keep my phone calls to 12 minutes or less. It's just the time thing. And on the little short ones that I have like that, it was probably four minutes for every person. I called 27 people yesterday just oh, to, stand you know, up. and then I went and got in the pool. Wow. Okay. Okay. First and foremost, thank you for joining us from Cabo. Okay. So we appreciate that. Yeah. Come to join the Who You Know show. I told you when you come to Dallas, okay, there's a spot over here for you. We want you in the studio, but uh, thank you for joining us from Cabo and, uh, and putting that pool aside for a second. Absolutely. That Are you kidding? Close. That's what life's about. When people need service, man, that's why I'm alive. Okay. And that's another thing I wanted to point out. Service, so, yeah. so on her her form because we when people come on the show we have a form and I, and one of those questions in that form was hey is there anything we can help you promote like will you you know do you want us to help you promote a book or a, a course or anything like that and she just said her response was i'm here to serve yeah. i love that because i'm asking her hey is there anything i can promote for you i'm gonna drop the mic you on like that, that on that response yeah i like I don't know if I've ever got that because everybody's, oh yeah, here's my website, here's my book, here's my whatever. And she just said, I'm here to serve. Like Powerful. That is so powerful. Yeah, I mean, if we all got so good at our skills, people who loved what we did in the world would connect to us because of them. Serve with a mighty heart and I'll tell you what, the blessings will be great. I get to meet people like you guys who are doing good in the world. Love it, love it. What's your greatest accomplish so far because i know you're gonna you're gonna smash that and go on to do even bigger things but i want to know what to you in your eyes what's your biggest accomplishment so far being a great mom <laughs> raising three mm -hmm. legends i know that's kind of a cheater one but, but so working cheap. so hard i could surround them with some of the greatest minds in the world those are the best teachers and experiences ever but i truly would say that I've gotten myself to a point where I, I just get to choose who I help and I choose to stay in the trenches with my clients rather than go off and do anything in the world. I love seeing families change. I see that love seeing them go on vacation. I love seeing them pay off debt. I love seeing them come together and just believe in what gifts they have. Like my life is like a gift and I don't know how it could get much better, but really Knowing the names of the people I change and seeing it change their families, that's probably my best accomplishment. Yeah. I love that what, too. What's yeah. one of your goals moving forward? Do you, if you want to share, like, what's maybe one of your top, like, what's the next yeah. summit? Yeah. If I were to talk huge summit, I've got my eyes there. I'm getting ready to do, I got invited to do one of the biggest documentaries about female entrepreneurs in the world, it's happening in a couple of weeks. And I'll tell you, I have my eyes set on how I could serve the world best. And I'd like to take Ellen's job or something like that. Hey, you. There you go. That's what I'm talking. I'd like to take Ellen's job. Oh, yes. There's a lot of good you can do with a bigger platform. And I, I believe I do well with that. So let's see how many people we can help. Whatever God wants to do with me, I'm in. That is right. awesome. That is pretty cool. I'm interested to hear about that docu documentary or docu-series or whatever. Yeah, send me some info on that. I want to want to check that out. Yeah, that's awesome. Isn't it crazy? You just go after one thing at a time and it's amazing how life works out. Yeah. So you said one of your greatest accomplishments is your kids and being able to put them in front of some of the greatest minds. You said like the greatest teachers and who are some of those people? Like I, I know I have a laundry list over here. You work with some awesome folks, but <laughs> Grant Cardone, E.T., all these folks. Anyway, but who, who in your mind is really stands out as, whoa, this person changed my life or I would, yeah. Yeah, that be? Grant and Elena Cardone have for sure changed my life and been so generous to me. Tim Grover, I, I will say probably one of the number one humans who has helped transform me other than grandpa family is Todd Stottlemyre, three-time World Series champion baseball player. We ran together in business for a while and he mentored and we worked together, but he and his wife have just poured into my family, my kids. 
And if you ever want to train someone's mind, you put them with a professional athlete. And he for sure has made a big difference in our family. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. Okay. Let me see if I got any like speed fire questions for you while we still have a few minutes here. Actually, you know what? Forget this. Why don't we go to the audience? Let's see if the audience has a question for Danelle. I can send you the Zoom link from the comments and you could actually like come into the show. Wait a minute. You could be in here with us. That's cool. Let's see. Who do we got? Meg Rose asked if she can talk to Oh, Meg Rose? Of course Meg Rose can. She's our hype lady. So hold on. Uh, Let me get the link. And Meg Rose, look for your your DM real quick. I'm going to send it to you. Let's see if we can make this happen. I don't know. We'll see. We haven't done this before, but we're going to try. Meg Rose, you're here. And uh, we got Danelle here. And you got maybe some questions or anything that you want to plug in with her? Absolutely. You are the first guest. One, thank you so much for joining our network and being a huge influence on so many people's lives. First and foremost, thank you. You are our first guest to make us, make me cry. Like oh. legit made me tear up. I'm like, oh my God, people, this is beauty soul. Like I, you are just a genuine person and thank you so much for your big heart and your sharing your story. Thank you. First and foremost, um, <laughs> I am dying to know a little bit more about yeah we always say the struggles the but what did that look like for you what made you get up in the morning what made you be motivated to continue to help people and what were your steps what were your baby steps because I know there's no leaps and downs right away right so what were your baby steps to just get yourself out of bed in the morning what a great question I'll tell you I feel it when you're asking it made me a little teary so I I want you to understand there's one statement I say all the time because this was it I remember going through radiation and like getting up off the floor and looking in the mirror and just being like you're in danger of not recovering like you're not getting it and at that time I was helping a group of people and I helped one person do something really amazing and it was that one person that goes, man, I'm needed. Like when it, when you move the success or the thing off of you and onto who needs you, you're no longer afraid of things. You no longer stop. You no longer wake up feeling bad. You wake up feeling needed. And this world needs every soul that's alive. And so I always tell people, I said, it wasn't about me. It was about who was going to lose if I didn't win. I had to go win so I could pull them out. And I think if you can help one person, you then know how valuable you are and you'll never again be afraid or quit on yourself because there are things that matter more than you do. And if you know the faces of the people you'd help, if you just gave it all you had, you'd never quit again. You'd never even think about it. You'd never slow down. You'd never not want to get up, run it, right? Mm-hmm. Like people are like, are you always like this? And I'm like, yep, welcome to my world. Like, why would I not? Welcome to the ride, people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and Linda asked this question, it's meant to be you, right? Okay. You're the only one who fought for it. I saw it in the comments. I'm watching the comments come in. Man, you're probably going to do something pretty great in this world, and they need you. Gratitude, growth, goals, and grace. Those are the four things that I live every single day by. Ten things I'm grateful for, three goals, reading 30 minutes to one hour every single day and taking a takeaway from it that you're going to apply immediately. And who do you need to offer great gifts? Sometimes it's just yourself. Wait, I got a mic here. I got a mic over here. Wait, wait, we got mics. Hold on. Actually, you know what? This is just one of those episodes. This is our golden mic episode. Okay, so, Danelle, we have this thing we call golden mic episodes. Okay, those are our top episodes, and that's what you are. You are one of our top, like, you're a world changer. We appreciate you so much. You've been just dropping the mics all over the place. I love what you said. Hold on real quick. I'm going to go back to it. It was, uh, who... Who's going to lose if I don't win? That, yeah. What a perspective. Like, who will miss out if you don't overcome your obstacle? And whatever mm-hmm. obstacle yeah. it is in front of you right now, so job seekers, who's going to miss out if you don't just tackle that thing and overcome? Thanks for listening to the Who You Know Show podcast. My name is Trevor Houston, and if you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing wherever you listen and leave us a positive review to help us keep the mics on in the studio. Until next week, that's the show. It's all about who you know.